With the healer build video that I released a couple of days ago, it was of course to be expected that I would also make a tank build video. And with the ballistic shield finally being fixed to the point where it's actually usable, I decided to give it a go. And I gotta say that I'm happy that I did, because uh, in combination with the Sentry's 4 piece, this was one of the most fun builds that I've had the pleasure to play with in a long time with the Division. It gives you the ability to be a real tank, a real frontliner that can hold its own versus the fire of multiple enemies. And that, while still being sort of a big threat to the enemies because of the ability to very quickly apply those sentry marks and a bleed effect on top of everybody. So, let's see what this build is all about. As I said, the 4-piece that I'm running with in this build is the sentry's 4-piece. I've heard a lot of people say that you shouldn't be tanking with a 4-piece sentry, but instead you want to go with something like a 4-piece nomad, so it's really, really difficult to take you down. But, in my opinion, a true tank is not just someone with a lot of health, someone with a lot of toughness. But it is also someone that can protect his teammates and apply some sort of crowd control that can help to set up kills for the damage dealers. Otherwise, it's very easy for the enemies or for other players to simply ignore you and walk right past you only to kill your teammates. That's not what you want. So that's why I went for the Sentry 4-piece. Now, the weapon that I'm using is the X45 pistol. I pretty much use this whenever the shield is up, which is pretty much all the time. This is a pistol with a very high fire rate. It has a higher fire rate than some of the automatic weapons in the game. Now, admittedly, it doesn't have the most damage. It doesn't do as much damage as those automatic weapons do. But with a fire rate this high, it's very easy to almost instantly apply all those three sentry marks on the player. As long as you can pull the trigger fast enough. I've also got the talent Harmful on this pistol, which helps to put that bleed on them. But uh, we'll get into the gameplay and the weapons soon enough. I want to talk about the gear pieces first. Overall, I would say that my main stats are pretty balanced. I don't believe it would hurt to build a lot if I were to spec a little more into stamina instead of firearms. As for a tank, my firearms is actually quite on the high end, and my toughness is actually a little bit on the low end. But I gotta say, this combination, this actually worked really well for me. The sentry harness has stamina rolled on it, it of course has armor, it has protection from elites, and it has increased skill experience. The mask then also has stamina, but in addition to that it has a skill power and it has the bleed resistance. And also because this happens to be a gear item from the 1.3 patch, it also still has that skill attribute, which in this case is 2.5% first aid ally heal. Then the knee pads are rolled into firearms, and again, as pretty much always, they have armor rolled on them. They also have blind death resistance, disrupt resistance, and more increased kill experience. And then the holster is simply a sentry holster with armor that just had the highest stats on it that I could find. The both firearms and stamina are above the 1000 range, it is just that the electronics on it, they are quite low. Now besides the Sentry 4 piece, I'm also using two high-end items. The first of those two is the backpack, a resourceful backpack to be more specific. Uh, this talent makes it so that all the healing that is applied to you also heals all of your skill objects. Um, and I think that when you're running with a ballistic shield setup, this is kind of a must-have, as every time that you pop a medkit, pop a first aid, or get healed by a teammate, the shield gets healed for that same amount. And that makes it almost infinitely more tanky, especially if you're also running with a dedicated healer in the team, you know, with the support station. If you're standing in it, the shield pretty much never dies because it constantly gets those heals. Then for the second high-end piece, the gloves, I'm actually running a more damage-orientated talent because I like to run this one with Decisive. Having 35% extra damage on headshots with the sidearms is probably one of the strongest gear talents in the game if you combine it with the shield, then just like with the resourceful backpack, in my opinion, this is almost an absolute must pick up. The rolls on both of these items are nothing out of the ordinary. The backpack is again rolled with armor and it also has disrupt resistance. And then the gloves are rolled with pistol damage, damage to elites and held on kill. It is, um, it is especially important to get gloves that actually roll with pistol damage or at least re-roll the pistol damage on them, just as I did, because that is only going to make all those damage amplifiers, such as the Sentry 3-piece and the Decisive Gloves, that much more powerful. The mods that I have on my gear are either firearms mods or electronics mods, but as I mentioned earlier, it probably wouldn't hurt to build a little more into stamina, because, you know, my toughness is quite on the low end. What is absolutely necessary though, is that you have armor rolled on all of these mods, because currently it is very important to always max out on armor. Try to get as much of it as possible. 
It is also absolutely essential that you get Ballistic Shield Damage Resilience Performance Mods in every single one of your performance mod slots. Two on the backpack, one on the holster and one on the knee pads. What this is going to do is that it is going to provide your character with extra all damage resilience as long as your Ballistic Shield is up. And that makes quite a big difference in terms of how tanky you actually are. With more Ballistic Shield damage resilience, you can take more damage when the shield is up. As you can see here, my toughness without the shield up, it only sits at around 280,000. But the moment that I pop out the Ballistic Shield, it jumps up to almost 400,000. And because this damage resilience counts as all damage resilience, all the other damage mitigation bonuses, such as the one from the booster shot, or the one that you get with on the move, or maybe the one that you get with the survivor link, all those damage resistant bonuses, they stack additively. And that results in you having a crazy amount of toughness every now and then during fights. That is, of course, if you're using the right talents. I'm still running with that same Hungry Hawk as my primary weapon, you know, the one that I showed in the healer build. I only really use it for those rare moments when my shield actually does break and I don't have to use my pistol anymore. But the real star of the show is my first life pistol, the X45, as I will be using this weapon pretty much 99% of the time. I already showed you the talents, but just to go over them a little more in depth, I've got Expert on it and Harmful. Expert is in my opinion the best PvP talent in this game that you can roll on weapons. Simply because of the fact that it gives the players extra burst damage just when they need it most. When the enemy is about to die. In PvE however, you do not get a lot of value out of this as most of the time the effective health of the NPCs, you know, the majority of that that comes from their armor. But again, in PvP this can result in hits that hit for more than 20,000 damage per bullet. Now combine that with the faster rate of fire that this weapon has and the already applied sentry marks that the enemy might have on them, and you can see how dangerous this weapon can become when somebody is at low health. Harmful is also pretty strong for PvP because it has a 15% chance to apply a bleed to the target with every single bullet. This is basically a poor man's version of the Predator's Mark IV piece. With 30 bullets in the magazine, you're pretty much guaranteed that you're gonna bleed a target multiple times before you have to reload. And having that constant crowd control on top of everybody that will prevent them from running past you to your teammates or in some cases running away. The skills that I'm using most of the time they shouldn't really come as a surprise to you. First up I am of course using the ballistic shield, more specifically the assault shield. To be really honest with you I think that every mod on the ballistic shield is a good option, you can choose what you want to go for here. Kinetic breaker also synergizes very well with the resourceful backpack because the shield it, it basically takes damage and then it heals you, but because you get healed, uh, the shield also gets healing through the resourceful backpack and that results in uh, you having a bit more effective health on that shield. But for me personally, um, because I also spec more into firearms, I just really like the extra 20% damage that comes with the assault shield. And I think that uh, with the increased accuracy, the faster reload speed, the reduced knockback and uh, again the extra damage that the assault shield comes with, all of those add up to me being able to do my job better. The health on this shield is admittedly at the low side, but keep in mind that enemy players cannot land headshots on a shield, which, you know, that might sound obvious, but that also means that they're not going to get any headshot damage bonus, so they're doing less damage on the shield than that they're doing damage on players. And also, because of the resourceful backpack, I can also use the first aid or a med kit to heal the shield back up through resourceful. So in my opinion, it's actually durable enough at around 120,000 skill power. You know, for most situations. The second skill that I use, besides the Ballistic Shield, that actually depends on the content that I'm doing. If I'm playing in the Dark Zone, then yeah, sure, First Aid Overdose is my go-to pick no matter what. But if I'm playing PvE content, then I actually think I prefer the Life Support Support Station. Yes, that is Life Support Support Station. I know, sounds weird. But I really prefer this because it heals me a lot more over time than uh, the first aid overdose does. Now, why the life support mod? Well, there's simply one simple reason for that, and that is that the healing on the life support mod is a lot higher than the healing on the rest of the support stations. And I gotta say, after using it a while, it is also a very nice quality of life feature uh, that it automatically revives you when you go down in its area. This allows you to kind of tank PvE content with a lot more confidence because even if things are cutting close and you're about to die, um, it doesn't matter because if you actually go down, you will come back three seconds later anyway. 
And that allows the rest of the squad to very quickly carry the boxes on Clear Sky, just to name one example. The talents that I'm running with this build are Critical Save, Shrapnel, Combat Medic, and On The Move. Critical Save gives me 40% all damage resilience if I use a med kit in my last health segment. This is strong, we already know why it is strong. Pretty much everybody is using this with pretty much every build. And uh, this is also a must have over here as it synergizes very well with the Ballistic Shield damage resilience. Shrapnel gives the player a 30% chance to apply a bleed to all targets within a 10 meter range around you every time that you put the bleed on someone. So you shoot somebody with the bleed, well then there's a chance that everybody that's rushing in is also getting the bleed and that really that puts a big dent in any momentum that other players might have. Combat Medic is always going to be a must-have in group play, but with this build in particular it is exceptionally strong simply because it also heals the shield for an additional 40%. That is, on top of the healing that it would already receive from Resourceful. Because of this, there have been scenarios where I wanted to push in, but my shield was about to die. So, what did I do? Well, I simply popped a medkit and the shield instantly comes back to almost full health, allowing me to make that push and to be that frontliner that pushes people out of whatever cover they're setting themselves up with. That is some really, really strong talent synergy right there. Last up we have On The Move and this gives me 30% extra all damage resilience every time that I kill a target while I'm moving. Now with the Ballistic Shield I'm generally always moving either slowly backwards or slowly forwards. And because all these unkill talents and mechanics in the game, they also proc when you kill a skill object, such as a Seeker Mine, a Support Station, or a Turret, this is a very strong pickup with this build as well. And just like anything else, on the move also counts as all damage resilience, and these kind of talents, they greatly increase your toughness for a short period of time, because you of course already have that all damage resilience from your shield. Now, I found that if you're running with the shield, there are really two things that you're going to excel at, with the first one of those two being able to walk into enemies and push them away like nothing else. When I first realized how much I was able to just push in and force people back, I was quite amazed with it myself as well. I wasn't really able to do that with any other build before. Either the enemies assume that I don't do any damage because I'm carrying a ballistic shield and they ignore me, which often results in them dying, or they do focus me down and then uh, you can easily out-trade damage with them because uh, the Ballistic Shield is tanking everything for you. To kind of counteract the grenades that people kept throwing at us, we actually tried running a healer setup in the squad with a four-piece final measure. Yeah, I know, I don't believe that this set is worth running either, um, but because it is quite hard for me to dodge those nades without rolling away or without losing my position, I actually didn't mind trying it out, you know, I'm all up for trying new things, so a uh, four-piece final measure and PvP, let's go! But unfortunately, we had to come to the conclusion that currently the four-piece for the final measure, it also diffuses friendly grenades, um, which made it so that the set worked against us more often than not, because uh, my teammate would throw in a stun grenade, and then the stun grenade would get absorbed by uh, the healer. Now, the four-piece final measure wasn't too strong to begin with, at least not in my opinion, uh, but with this being a real issue, I really cannot see a place for the final measure in this game anymore, unless you're playing nothing but Falcon Lost all day. In that case, hey, more power to you. Now the second thing that I noticed that this set is very, very good at is holding up an area and making sure that enemy players cannot push through. When I was playing with this set, I actually got comfortable enough to hold up things such as the underground staircases versus two, three or even four people. And every time that they tried to rush in, I simply threw a nade on the floor and uh, I reapplied the bleed and all the sentry stacks. Which made it really hard for them to get to the rest of my team. And uh, the rest of my team, they were fighting for other players at the other side of the underground. So I guess that was really helpful, otherwise we would have probably been overwhelmed. And in some cases, you don't even need your team to confirm kills, because as soon as somebody falls below that last health segment, you know, we already talked about this, you're going to do that 100% extra damage versus them, which pretty much results in a near instant death. You're gonna do so much damage to them. I've noticed that this build gets even better when played in combination with the healer build that I showed a few days back. 
And that's actually what we did most of the time. When I was playing a tank build, we had a, a healer build with an immunizer. And when I was running with the healer build, I had one of my teammates run with this exact tank build, and it worked out very well for us. So yeah, there's role-playing in the division, in PvP. That's a crazy thought, right? In my opinion, this build is good, it's effective, it's versatile, but above all, it's also a lot of fun to play. And it's something different, and I can really recommend anyone trying this out for themselves. One thing that I do want to give you guys a heads up with though is that uh, I experienced a lot more toxicity when playing with a setup like this with a healer and with a tank. Uh, people in this game, especially on the PC platform, are nowadays very quick to jump the gun and call you a cheater or a macro user for all sorts of things. Uh, not just this by the way, but it just came up now that I'm talking about it. And because with this build you're going to apply the stacks really fast because you have a high fire rate pistol, People are most of the time just gonna call cheats instead of simply saying a GG in chat. On stream I even went as far as putting down the webcam on top of my mouse so that people could see that I wasn't just holding down one button and I believe that the streamer Wids has also experienced the same thing as well when he was running a shield build back in patch 1.3. But my advice is, is that if you do not want to deal with this just mute the chat or proximity voice but I guess that's all pretty self-explanatory. Oh, and one last tip. Do not turn your back against the enemies when you are trying to retreat. It seems very obvious, but uh, I have made that mistake when running with this. Shame. And that's, that's going to be all for today. More build guides are on the way, I've got a lot more planned. And as you might have noticed, this build was a little less min-maxed than uh, the builds that I usually make videos about. Um, but I've done that on purpose for the sake of two reasons. First up, I've had some people saying that I only show builds that uh, have god rolls on them and that it's not something that's doable for the average player. Which, I, I, I guess I guess it's a fair point, so um, you know, I'm listening. Uh, and second up, min-maxing these builds to heaven, that also takes up a lot of time. And when I can just do it like this, when I'm showing the build in a good state but not in a perfect state, that allows me to spend less time grinding out the gear and more time on actually creating the content, which in turn means that uh, you're gonna get more than one video a week, which is what a lot of people have been asking me to do. So let me know which of the two ways you prefer, and then I will go that route. As always, I hope you enjoyed this video, and I will see you guys later, or like they say, in the Netherlands. See you later!